Have you ever wanted to make Pokemon? Well, this is a video for you. As you can see, we've got a nice recreation of Pallet Town using JavaScript. So let's get into it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and create, as normal, a nice p5.js script using Replit or whatever IDE you're using. I'm going to go to the p5 play website. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to get the import script from JS Deliver. We'll place our script here and we're ready to start. So we're going to get rid of all this stuff. And add in a clear, because we always need a clear at the start. And we're going to get rid of that colour list. So first things first, we need to create some variables. So we've got let tile size equals 10, because I want each of my little boxes, my little sprites, my tiles, to be 10 pixels in width and 10 pixels in height. Now, we need a bunch of sprites or a bunch of groups. <clears throat> so we're going to have one called trees to be the outside. We need the fences. We need the water's edge. We need the water. We need the normal ground. We need the grass. We need the signs. And these are the best variables. We need one for the house, for the second house, Oaks Lab. And then red being our character. So we make a bunch of variables there. Now, in our setup, we need to do a couple of different things first. So I'm just going to make the canvas a bit smaller 400 by 400. I'm going to set the background to be black just so we can see everything, make sure it's all working, get rid of Grammarly, and we can see what we're working with. Now, there's a couple of things we're going to do. Oh, missing a bracket somewhere because I've put that there. Um, is we're going to need to set all the sprites to have rotation lock on there. So I'm going to do all sprites, all sprites dot rotation. You can use that um, individually for each sprite, but let's just do them all for now. And then we'll make a bunch of groups. So we've got trees equals a new group. Then we need to set everything up now. So trees.w equals tile size, trees.height equals tile size, trees.tile. I'm going to have my trees as an equal sign, just like we had for bricks previously. That's going to be sort of like the border. We're going to set the collider to static because we don't want to be able to go through it. Um, and then we're going to add an image. So trees.image equals something. I ain't got that yet. And then trees.scale because the picture is quite big. A tenth of its size. Now I've actually got a bunch of images all ready to go. Basically what I did was I looked online, went onto this website called the Spriters Resource, and they have pictures of everything. Now, Pokemon, by the looks of things anyway, when I investigated the uh, sprites and things, are all honestly, it seems to be one big screen. So I've got all these pictures, I'm going to upload. So you can see, if I go to graph, uh, floor, you can't see much on there. That's the houses, the grass, the trees. Okay, so I want the image to be tree.png, like that. Now, what I'm going to do is do the same thing for all of my various bits and bobs that I've got. Now I've already got these done, so I'm going to copy these across, but I will let you pause the video and you can go ahead and 
in a second, but the codes are literally the same. It's not me being lazy or awkward, but I've already set up all these bits with all the correct bits. So if you pause the video now, you'll be able to see all my groups. So pause the video now, and then that's me with a set of groups. That's all of my groups done. Okay, now if you search for Pokemon Yellow Palette Town, take a look at the first picture you see, barring the people, because I've kept them out on purpose, you can see we've got two houses, grass all around the edges, um, some water at the bottom, and our three buildings with our fences in the middle. So what I've gone ahead and done already, is I've set up these as some tiles. So I put them in there, you can see, I've got my sign, my other sign, my other sign there. I've got my sign, the Phillips Lab, I've got my B, my water's edge, I've got W for water, I've got the uh, tilde key or the squealy line for the grass, and now we've got a little gap at the top. So if I run that, you see, that's a relatively accurate looking map there. That looks decent, looks right. The only thing that's missing is the houses, which is what we're going to do next. Now, our houses, I'm doing them as sprites because if you put them as tiles and stick them in, like you should do, unfortunately, because it's trying to fit on the row and column and they're set to a set size, it's not going to be big enough because really these, this um, house sprite takes up uh, three or 30 pixels or three blocks in height and three in width. So if we stick it in as a tile, it's not going to fit. So what we're going to do is make some variables. So house equals a new sprite. We do that 75, 50, and it's going to be static. House dot image equals house dot png. Like that and um, house dot scale equals 0.2 because it's really big, and then house dot width. Is 35, house dot height equals 30. So if we run that now, we should see a house in the right place. There we go, we can. And then we want exactly the same thing, my second house. But this one's going to be slightly different in that it's called house 2, which isn't a great variable name, but we're only making palette sounds, so it's not going to matter in this case. And this wants to be at 155 because I want it more across. And then what we're going to do is make the lab. Oaks lab equals a new sprite. 140, 100 static because I want it to be a lot further down. Lab.image equals lab.png. Obviously, you can do this by loading it in the preload that you should do anywhere, especially for a bigger game. But we're just getting we're just getting palette talent to look right. That's all we're doing today. Lab.h equals 200. And then lab.scale equals 0.2. So if we run that, we've got lab there. Possibly a little bit um let's give it that. Possibly, I need to get rid of one of these lines here, so the gap's not as big. Just bring all those bits up a little bit. Right, that's actually looks pretty spot on. Okay, so the very last thing we're going to do is we're going to create red or our character. So this one's quite a lot of stuff. So we've got red equals a new sprite, because we actually want to be able to do stuff with it. Red dot um, tile equals R. Do I need R? I originally have him as a sprite. I think we're going to, I think let's not have him as a, as a tile thing, because when he moves, the tile disappears. So we don't want that. So let's have red dot collider equals dynamic, because we're going to move him around. Red dot width 
equals 27. Now this is based on I'm using a sprite sheet, so if I didn't have these numbers correct, um, just like a bit of trial and error, then it just looks a bit looks a bit rubbish. Um, because the when you do a sprite sheet in a minute, sprite dot sprite sheet, it cuts off half the image, which doesn't look very good. Can we want to move around and actually animate properly? So now we're going to add some animations. So red dot add anis, and then I want these to go in there. So I've got up, down, left, right, and stood still. And um, if I find red, see I've got stood still, I've got or down, up, uh, left, and right. So I've got row zero, row one, row two, row three. These two have only got two sprites, these have got three. So if you look back in my script, you see for up and down, I use three frames. For left and right, I use two. And then I've just stolen the first frame um, to stand in. We're going to set by default the animation to stand. And then it's going to be way too big. So red.scale equals 0.6, 6% of its size. And then that's pretty much it at the minute. So we should have red spawn next to the sign there. So I'm getting this error message here because I'm already doing stuff before I load the images. So really I should use preload properly if I want to get it to work, but it still works, so it's all good. Um, now with some basic stuff, let's zoom the camera in. So let's do um, camera.zoom equals 2, camera.x equals red.x, camera.y equals red.y, and then if kb.pressing here, we do red.move, we're going to move, oh, I'm all weird again, we're going to move it <coughs> 10 pixels essentially, so it moves one tile. So it stays sort of locked in. Um, and that's the speed there. And we're going to set this animation. Red.any equals left like that. And now I can literally copy this multiple times. So I'm pressing A, if I'm pressing D, I'm going to go right. Pressing W, I'm going to go up. I'm pressing S, I'm going to go down. That and then else red dot and e equals stand. So let's see if that works. So just zoom right in, which it has, and then moving along. Just like that. Must be a little bit fast, but I can run around. I can't walk through those bits. There's a little bit of collision when you saw it. See, it glides a little bit as well, pointing to it so it remembers which place I was looking last. So, I'm going straight to looking down. But that's pretty much it. So, if you enjoyed that, and you've mixed and you've used it to make something even better than this, then please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.